the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Got my bag packed for the airport, just gonna book a flight off to Bali to test this out. I've got this really highly original idea that I want, is to go in front of a waterfall, raise my arms up and test out the slow motion. So let's get ourselves over to Bali and I'll see you guys there. This is the life. The only issue though, guys, I'm not in Bali. I am still in Rill. When I went to book my flights half an hour earlier, this is what happened. What do you mean my payment got declined? Ugh, be all these DJI products and buying, won't it? Never mind. Beautiful weather in Rill as always today. I was hoping to get my Bali shot with the, with the waterfall. I was going to use Rill Fountain. The council have switched it off. What's that all about? It's going to take my shirt off as well. 4K 120 shot. There's a few goals there. They're having a ball. I'm recording the audio here from the Osmo and then I'm going to sync it up later with the drone. Quick stabilization walking test. First one, no wide angle lens attached. And I'm going to walk normally, so no ninja walk. Okay, so just walk straight forwards. Okay, and then that's add in the ninja walk. So bend the knees, walk from the heel to the toe, just walk forwards. And then I'm going to add in the wide angle lens. I love how that just clips on really easily. Now this might be even smoother. Okay, so normal walk. And then let's add in the ninja walk. Let's move to the iPhone 13 Pro, do normal walk. And then ninja walk with the iPhone 13 Pro. I was just doing the stabilization test and Pocket 3 doesn't seem to be switching on. Now, the battery was very low. The last I looked, it was about 10%. I do have the extended battery in, though. Okay, it's making noises. But the screen... But there's, a, there's a light there on the screen, and the screen is... If you can see... But there's a... It doesn't look healthy. I'll show you on the B-roll. It does not look healthy. This is a worry. 10% charging, okay. Okay, let's, okay, okay, it's, it's sprung to life there. But that was a bit weird, that was a bit weird. It was, anyway, it seems to be fine now and the battery was very low. So whether that was the issue, just shot my first time lapse on the Pocket 3. Quite impressive, I'll have to see it on the bigger screen, obviously. I do think in my own work, I need to incorporate more hyperlapses and time lapses. So the simplicity of this, you know, let's say you're out somewhere, you just want to have a little coffee, a beer, just set this running, having your time lapse. Just been testing out the Vortex, the spin shots on the Pocket 3. This is what tempted me to buy this camera in the first place when I saw Brandon Lee's review and it just looked incredible. Motion lapses, I'm thinking maybe I'll get a motion lapse at this bridge. Time is getting on, I'm getting cold and hungry. So I don't know, I'll see how I feel when I get there, see if the shot lines up. The little bag from DJI for the Pocket 3 Osmo. It's okay, I mean, I wouldn't use this regularly when I'm taking it out because it's, the fit is really tight, so putting your Osmo 3 in all the time and taking it out, it's just the point of the Pocket 3 is it goes in your pocket. The shots I'm about to show you now, they've all been shot with items in my pockets and there's no drone. So obviously we have the Osmo Pocket 3. We also have this extender stick, very cheap, I picked this on Amazon. I'll see if I can find the link. Now visibility is, is kind of tricky just using the Osmo 3 because there's no rotatable screen. I mean, it flips around, but you can't tilt it at an angle to look up at. But the, the Mimo app is pretty good. It's not perfect. I mean, I find that using the joystick controls is not amazing, but the, the feed is smooth. So let's just select a box here around that tree. Just do a little bit of an orbit shot here. With these things like the, you know, 
selecting these boxes though, you, you've got to be careful not to get too repetitive. It's very tempting to kind of let either the drone or the Osmo 3 do all the work for you. I think I would always encourage you to just click the box off sometimes, you know, use your own creativity. So you push up. It would be easier to be a bit smoother with a drone to get these shots, but it's still nice, isn't it, when you slow it down afterwards. Let's try some low shots. Oh, this is good, isn't it? Saves your back, this does. <laughs> By the way, when you're trying to track your dog, I found that it's it does lose the, the subject. It's not as good as, it, let's say, you, you select a spot on the tree or something. It's a shame that you know, the 4K 120 is very good actually. I'll show you some sample shots we've used with that. It's very, very good, but it's not the same as using 4K 60. You haven't got D-Log M, and it, it's like using the S&Q mode on the um, Sony A7S III. You know, it goes, goes straight into slow motion. So you haven't got the, you haven't got audio, you can't use D-Log M. I mean, whether some of those features eventually come in a firmware update, you know, who knows. I'm gonna go on a little trip and all I'm gonna take is the Pocket 3 and my drone. So I'm gonna leave this camera, the A7S III, behind. the coffee shop test going on and it's tracking me you see as I'm moving along the it's tracking me I'm not used to looking into that little lens it's going to take a bit of an adjustment by the way minus two sharpness minus one noise reduction go to settings custom and then you can change them there just takes away that overly digital look much nicer I've got slight separation anxiety with leaving my Sony A7S III behind. So I'm hoping that the face detect will work on here and as I move around it will track me. Sometimes when you face away that's going to be a test to see whether it still works. She's just worried that I'm going to have less to spend on her dog treats. Tilly's lost interest. She's long lost interest in whatever I'm doing. When there's a treat involved then she'll suddenly become a camera nerd. Extended grip on at the moment and we've got wide angle lens so I'm just going to try and do a little section now without cutting or editing to show off Tilly. She's starting to get a little bit muddier now. Keeping a bit low, probably getting bunions in my feet while I'm doing this. But we're kind of approaching peak time of autumn now with a mix of beautiful colours on the leaves. Tilly. I do like this wide angle mod. I think it's really, I love how mag you know magnetic it goes into the case in and out, it's dead easy to apply. You're always a little bit worried you're going to lose things like that, but this seems to be relatively secure. All right, she's going up higher than me here, so this will be interesting to see. Good girl, Tilly. I've not got any tracking on here at the moment. I'm just trying to do it roughly by eye, not being too fussy. You can do it's easier with the person because it picks up the face better. You can do it with objects, but it's not as accurate. Bit of a pullback going on there. Just shows how you can create some really nice different variety of shots just by playing around, not, not overthinking. Sometimes the best shots just happen. Good girl. Oh, I'm amazed I haven't ended up in a puddle filming this today. There's been, there've been a couple of moments where I've been pretty close to doing that, but so far, I mean, my feet are completely drenched in mud, but so far my trousers are okay-ish. Tilly is having a wonderful walk. She doesn't need any more exercise after this. We're going to a spot, I'm trying to remember what it's called. Was it Deal's Gorge or Devil's Gorge? Devil's Gorge. Oh wow, look at these trees coming up. I think we're coming up to it here. The stunning trees just in front of us now. I do quite like doing these sort of rough, you know, cuts without any editing just to show in, in practice what how things are. Oh wow, look at this, look at this, just arriving, incredible. Is this the main spot or does it go further on? This is the main one, is it? 
and get the drone out here. Tilly is just, she's obsessed with my drone. With, with the older drones, she used to be scared of them and now she sees these mini drones as like her best friends. You know, she's, she's crouched down as though it's a, little, it's a little doggy friend. She just wants to play. I've got cine mode here, just gaps you some nice slow shots. A nice little pushing shot here we've got going on. Just a little bit of the path revealing. Oh, wow, it's beautiful. Maybe some of you guys came for the Pocket 3 and now you're going to be wanting a drone. <laughs> you know, you start looking at this camera and thinking that's really good value. And then you get the pack, you get the add-ons and you get the care refresh. It does start adding up. Normal to wide angle like that. Tilly looks pretty cute down by the stream there. Tilly, do you like the Pocket 3? You impressed with the DJI Pocket 3? Just show you here, how, I'll flip the camera around, this shows you how close I am to the water there. So it's pretty, if, if I'm able to get fairly good audio there. I've been going out today with this little travel tripod, which, you know, it's got the, the stand and mount. Easy to get on the Pocket 3. We're in fading light now. It's not quite blue hour, but it's, you know, it's dying. I'm still at ISO 100 though. Before I set out today, I watched a Tony Northrup review of the Pocket 3. Tony with the glamour mode. I can never unsee that. I really like Tony Northrup. I sort of see him as an uncle figure in my life. And he dropped a bomb, which DJ I probably wish he hadn't, where he said, I hope there's a pro Pocket 3. And I'm like, oh, don't do that to us, DJ. Don't do that. And I know what he means, you know, for photography, he wasn't overly impressed with the Pocket 3. So for you, for your guys' information, you photographers out there, I don't think it's really designed for photography though, is it? It's, it's, a, it's the ultimate vlogging camera. It is the ultimate vlogging camera and they've smashed it out of the park. I don't think they would release a Pocket 3 Pro or Pocket 3S, but then I didn't think that with the Mavic Air 2 and then the Air 2S came out. DJI just do their own thing when it comes to marketing and releases. I really like what they've done in the Pocket series. You know, the Pocket 2 wait three years and really give us a nice camera. We're up to ISO 800 now, and it's quite impressive that the face tracking still seems to be working. We have the Sony A7S III over here, and I'm recording with the Rode wireless mics, and then back to the DJI Pocket 3. I'm gonna tr let me try and talk. Right, I'm going to try and talk in the centre to be fair. So I've got the Sony A7S III over here and then the DJI Pocket 3 to the right. Welcome to Brittany. Eh? Filming under the umbrella at the moment. We've come back to the same spot as I was at the other day. And it's just constant rain. So at least with the Pocket 3, you, know, you come with your drone, there's no chance of any footage. You've kind of got this, you can do your ninja walk and you can still get some footage and your day's not been a complete waste and you've not come around with too much gear. In this sort of weather, I would not fancy using the A7S III on a gimbal. You know, it would just be too heavy. And this is absolutely perfect. You can still hold, hold an umbrella. You can still get your shots. Never really thought about this before, getting this camera. But in the practical situation, you, you start to really appreciate the, the functionality of this, the, the, the options it gives you. And no one really likes filming in the rain, but you get these days booked out when you, when, and the weather, you've got this limited time in autumn that you can do it. You know, Dave's here and it, he's just sat there with his drone, little man bag, just watching me, because what, what else can he do? There are some problems with this Pocket 3. One of them, gonna leave that towards the end, is the most serious of all, potentially. Let's run through them pretty quickly. There's no color assist, so you can't preview the LUT while you're out filming. This is quite annoying. It's not a deal breaker, but maybe this comes in a firmware update. We'll just have to wait and see. No interchangeable battery. There is the extendable grip, but I would have liked that. Let's say the battery dies in a few years time. Is this still gonna work? The SD card slot is really bad. You know, fair enough with the mini drones, I can understand that because they're fighting for every gram. But this feels like a really new technology piece of gear, apart from the SD card slot, which just 
seems ancient. You know, I'd have liked a little flap, a bit like on the Air 2S, which is really easy to get your SD card in and out. The tracking isn't always a particularly smooth motion. In fact, sometimes I think I might switch off the tracking. You know, it's really handy to have, I like it, but sometimes it can be a little bit, moving a little bit too much, just not smooth enough. I've noticed with the wide angle lens, there is a little bit of distortion. It's not too bad. Most shots, you're not gonna notice it, but on the shot where I took the drone off, it's quite noticeable the curvature there and also on some of the shots of the trees there is some distortion with this this could be fixed in post but then you're often cropping in to do that my next issue is the cost of this gets quite expensive i think the value of the pocket 3 will hold up pretty well but will the extras hold up these tend to be the things that devalue the quickest so if you do want the combo pack i think there's an argument for just holding on you know just seeing if you get a little deal down the line Honestly, if I had a YouTube channel, I probably wouldn't have rushed out to get this, especially the whole pack. I really want it. I really like trying out the mic and these things, but if you don't want the mic, the battery's pretty good on this anyway. You don't necessarily need the wide angle mod and you could always buy that separately. If you want to just pick up the Pocket 3, go for it. I mentioned before, you can't tilt this screen if you want to point your shots looking up. This is a bit of a surprise, you know, Canon 70D you had the rotatable screen. This isn't really old camera we're talking about. This is this new high-tech camera. I'm quite surprised that it doesn't do that. Whether it's for durability reasons, I'm not sure, but... I mean, the app is pretty good, the Mimo app, so for visibility you can get that out. Now, another problem, I didn't think of this in my list, but it's just come to mind now. I don't think the screen is as brilliant as people are making out. Yes, there's the innovation that you can rotate it. That is very clever. But it's, I found it a bit weird to use. I'm getting used to it now. There was an issue with the joystick that really confused me. I'll show you on, on the B-roll to figure that issue out. This is still a tiny screen and to judge your shots, it's not brilliant. I think I will use the Mimo app quite a lot. The final problem with this, and this is, this is really bad. This is really bad. This rotating screen on Reddit, there's not so much talk on YouTube of this, but there is talk on Reddit of a few people and I've seen a few shorts. There's a spring that's broken on this and they've only owned the Pocket 3 for a few days. Now it's very unfortunate for those people and I'm hoping that they just, it was maybe like a faulty batch and this is a very small sample size. But I think you guys should be aware of this, and I think you should look into this. Have a look at Reddit. Maybe we have this Pocket 3, and mine seems to be fine. You know, I've filmed with this over a week now, been using it a lot, rotating it on and off a lot. Is this same spring problem going to happen to me in a year, two years down the line? This new feature is a new thing. Now, DJI are very good at gimbals. They've got a lot of experience, so I've got a lot of confidence in the gimbal being strong and good. This rotating screen is new. Now I'm sure DJI will have stress tested it and I do have confidence in DJI, like if there's any problems. I did get care refresh and I would probably recommend that because the fact you're putting this in your pocket in and out and all these times, there's a chance you drop it one day, something happens. They will honor your care refresh. You know, I've had to use them with drones before and they're pretty good. But I do worry about this, the, the long run of just keep turning it on, keep turning it off, the spring goes on this. This rotating screen, I've decided that I'm gonna do it quite gently whenever I switch it on. Maybe that's the, when people have bought it and have had faults, maybe they've just done this. You hear the clicking there. I'm a bit nervous doing it here, the click. I mean, that should work fine, but if people are having faults with it, I'm, I'm just gonna be just a bit slightly, give it like a bit of a softer touch. So hopefully that might help you guys with the durability of this. Back in the Christmas jumper, because I want to end on a positive note. And what I will say is, a couple of weeks that I've been using this, it's one of the most enjoyable cameras I've used. It's, yeah, it doesn't give you the same adrenaline rush as going out with your drone does. But it just, just makes you feel really happy. It makes you really excited to go back and look at your footage. Because you're filming in environments that you wouldn't normally be filming in. And that probably frees you up a little bit. It frees you up creatively, you know, the way you talk, the way you move around, the way you can capture candid moments. This camera's really amazing. It really is. And, you know, just little issues I had, things like the colour assist. You know, in, in the grand scheme of things, when you think about the benefits that this brings, 
It's really not a big deal. And some of these issues may well be fixed in firmware updates. We don't know. The thing about the rotating screen, DJI are a huge company. You know, they will have stress tested this. It's just a little bit of a thing to think about. And I do think for some people, if you want to get the whole creative bundle and maybe some other things might be thrown in in a bundles online, you know, you probably save a bit of money if you're just a little bit patient and wait a little bit longer. But if you need this, if you've got some work coming up soon, then go and grab it. You will not be disappointed, apart from the unlucky few that get faulty models. Happy Christmas, everyone. These screen protectors have just arrived. So you've got a glass screen protector, both for the front camera and also for the back screen. I think particularly when you've got your extended pole out, you do want some protection there. It's a new camera. A what? A new cam, yeah. I know, yeah. I've never seen a camera like that before. Bob. Oh,